talk about what's going on in Frisco. We have a segment called What's Up Frisco, and we're going to unveil our new sounder this week. We'll go a little bit deeper and learn from our guests their involvement in Frisco and some of their thoughts, perhaps, on where Frisco's headed. Tell us what drew you to do business in Frisco as well. That's a good question. I actually grew up in the area, so I tell the story a lot because it's true. So I grew up in Plano, Central Plano, and I guess it was the early 90s. We had a real good friend of my dad's, and she said, hey, I, I just bought a house. I want you guys to come see it. We said, cool. Where is it? She said, Frisco. We said, where's that? All right. Good afternoon, everybody. I am Brian Podelska, the host of the uh, Community Difference Frisco show. You are watching episode three of the show, and I am super fired up today for our guests. Uh, so we're going to bring them on here shortly. But if you haven't seen the show, basically what, what we are doing and what we're all about here on the Community Difference Frisco show is highlighting leaders in the Frisco community. So those are business leaders, entrepreneurs in the, in the uh, community of Frisco, political leaders in the community of Frisco, nonprofits in the community and surrounding communities of Frisco, Frisco ISD leadership, and sports. We are Sports Town USA. Uh, the moniker is, is appropriate here for Frisco. And one of our co-hosts today is living that in person. So without further ado, Lennon, let's bring on our co-host and say hello. There's hey. Shane. All right. How's it going? <laughs> happy to be here. Hey, happy to have you guys on our, uh, I'll call this our Christmas edition. So Sounds we'll good podcasting a little bit before Christmas. I'm wearing my festive Clark W. Griswold double zero Blackhawks jersey from the Christmas yeah. vacation movie. You know, I, I'm fired up for this show, especially right around the holidays here. Uh, it's episode three. It's the first time I've got you guys on as co-hosts. So Let's do a quick round the horn and just uh, introduce yourself. Tell us what you do, um, and then we'll introduce our, our you guys' guests, uh, bring them on board as well. So I'm just going to go around the horn. Chance, we'll start with you. Hi, I'm Chance Post. I'm the Director of Marketing for Total Care Emergency Room. Awesome. Jacqueline, go ahead. I am Jacqueline Kreider, a Managing Partner of PBJ Mortgage, where we are making mortgage simple. Symbols making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Awesome. Love it. Kendra. I'm Kendra Kennedy with Stuart Title. I sell all over Collin County and love to connect with realtors and lenders and with get them connected to their vendor partners so they can thrive and survive in 2024. We're going to need that in 2024. Andre, what's up, my man? Say hello. Hey, how are you guys? My name is uh, Andre Coles. I'm the head coach of the Frisco Fighters indoor football team. And he is our resident representative of sports in Frisco. So um, he did promise, and I'm putting this on the record now that we're on air, we were talking beforehand, I will be representing the Frisco Fighters, uh, you know, when I get a jersey from Andre. So I'm I got you. I got you. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Well, hey guys, um, once again, thanks for joining today. Um, I'm excited to meet you guys' guests. Um, real quick around the horn, but actually, you know what? Let's introduce the guests first and we can get them involved in the conversation. We'll go in the same order since it's the same order on my screen. Chance, uh, you have a guest today, my friend? I do not have a guest today. Uh, you know what? I'm sorry. I, it's I easy. You because you are, <laughs> yeah, just the roundabout way here. Chance has actually slid into an open spot today. Right. Uh, he's sitting in for Stephen Pine, so uh, he did not have opportunity to book a guest but uh we are pleased that you're on the show today Jared. so you we'll go to jack and jack and who's your guest today it is steve lester who is a real estate agent here um and does a lot of community work with a bunch of charities as well okay steve's not backstage yet okay yeah i think he was having some technical difficulties all right well let's get to the two that we know that we have guests on because we saw them uh pre-show so kendra why don't you introduce your guest my guest is Brenda Thompson. She's a realtor, but she's a broker. So she is the broker owner of How Smart Stars in Plano. It's on the border of Plano and Frisco. But Brenda and I know each other originally through Junior League of Collin County. So we, but we both live in Frisco. So we live and live and breathe and there, but we kind of work all over Collin County. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us today, Brenda. We'll we'll dive a little bit deeper into uh, your business and, and everything all about Frisco that uh, that you love, uh, knowing that you live here. And Andre, why don't you introduce your guest? Uh, my guest today is Madeline Smith. She is with Project Lean Nation in Frisco, which is a uh, a brand new business uh, here to Frisco, and are one of our partners here uh, with the Frisco Fighters. Awesome. Awesome. Well, nice to meet you, Madeline. Thanks for joining us today. Yes. Okay. Well, so what I wanted to ask before I get everybody on, um, 
we'll go around the horn real quick. Who's doing what for Christmas? Anybody traveling? Yeah, Brenda, I, I see your head yeah. now. Yeah. Yes, I will be heading to Oklahoma for Christmas. So not much of a difference, but you know, little little road trip up north. That's where awesome. I grew up, so it's home yeah. for me. Awesome. Anybody else traveling? What's up, Nathan? Let's go Frisco. There you go. Yes, well, sir. I'm, I got a fun trip to Houston also that I'm going to go skiing uh, after Christmas when all the, you know, all the hoopla dies down from Christmas. So I was okay, about to uh, say you're I'm, going to When everybody goes back to work, I'm taking time off. That's how I'm I plan. assuming that skiing is not going to occur in Houston. No, no, that's, that's what be I would say. I, I would like, it can't be yeah. in Houston unless there's a <laughs> mountain there that I didn't know about. If there's a massive climate change that I'm not aware of and, and right. yeah, a fake mountain. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm going to cool. New Orleans after going to the Sugar Bowl, but that's after Christmas. Oh, so, very cool. Very to cool. To watch, you know, that orange team beat the purple team. So. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, yeah. we can we can say names on the show. We're, yeah. If we want to get in a sports battle, we can do that real quick. <laughs> yeah, that's an easy one with all of us. <laughs> yep, gonna go watch those Longhorns take down the Huskies. So it should be fun. Awesome, Andre. I know you're you're from the East Coast area, right? Yeah, it's it's funny to hear somebody say Oklahoma is up north. I'm I'm from Philadelphia, uh, so so way up north. But uh, I'm actually hanging around here uh, this Christmas, I'm, and then I'll be going down to San Antonio to uh, the Alamo Bowl to do some stuff for the fighters. So hanging around here this year. Gotcha, gotcha. And Madeline, what you got going on? Hanging around here as well, just hanging out with family and hopefully taking off work for a few days. <laughs> Yeah, that, that would be a good thing. No, yeah. It's the season to take off of work. I'm personally heading out to Chicago uh, tomorrow, and I'll be up there for about a week. Looking, It's our annual trip up there. Looking forward to seeing some family and uh, maybe a little bit of white snuff stuff on the, on the ground, hopefully some mm -hmm. snow. We'll see what happens. I don't miss that at all. You know what? Neither do I. Um, <laughs> on a daily basis but it's nice to see it you know you know once a year we'll, we'll go with annual uh, and certainly my I kids was gonna love say, it. it's it's fun to play in for about a, a week and then yeah right done with that yeah it's it's when you're living in it day to day uh and it turns you know slushy and, and brown and dirty and, and yeah it's it's no fun um that's for sure all right well hey guys um what we're going to do right now is take a quick commercial break. We'll come back on the back end and we're going to talk about what's going on in Frisco. We have a segment called What's Up Frisco and we're going to unveil our new sounder this week. Uh, so looking forward to that, but we'll do that on the back what's end. What's up Frisco? There it is. Boom. <laughs> All right. Hit the commercials, Lennon. We'll be right back. All right. Well, we, we are a live show. So what you see is what you get um we are we are non-curated so what we're going to do is just we'll, we'll just continue to roll right into what's up frisco um i'm afraid lennon might have technical difficulties and he may yeah. be um, he may not be able to play anything in the background so we did get the sounder um what i'll do i know we've got a few folks uh or at chance i know that yep. you said specifically you have an event coming up why don't you share that with the group yeah so um January 17th, we've got a networking event with the Texas Legends, and I've got the Party Plaza. So it's going to be a big, big event with um, with the Legends people, with all of the people that do my networking, Total Networking, all the different listeners, all the different networking groups, the networking podcast, everybody's invited. It's free tickets, so I'll have a link. I don't have it yet, but I'll have a link for free tickets. Parking in the garage is 10 bucks. There's free food. It, it's a family. You can actually bring your family if you want to. If you've never been to a Legends game, they've got, you know, bounce houses. They've got all kinds of kid events. And you can see from the party plaza, you can actually see your kids running around the whole arena. So it's it's a pretty fun, kid-friendly, safe environment. Um, took my kids a few weeks ago, and it, they had a blast. So it's going to be uh, Wednesday, January 17th, 515. And you'll get there an hour and a half before the game starts. And then you can stay for the game or you can leave, but it's it's a super fun event. So I'll get more information out to all the groups uh, once we get the flyer done and all that good stuff. Okay, and, and you heard him say, any difference listener is invited. So that means you, if you're watching this show, you're invited. Right. Um, and I can second that. Those Legends games are awesome. Um, and they're, they, they run a great networking event. So um, it's a great combination of two, two great things. So check it out. All right, who else? Andre, I know you got something. 
Yeah, so we actually are uh, hosting our second tryout here at Sports Academy um, in Frisco. Uh, we'll have that here in late January. And then to piggyback off of the Legends, uh, we actually play in the same building uh, on the same concourse uh, as the Legends. And our first home game uh, is a little further down the line, but our first home game will be uh, March 22nd versus the Tulsa Oilers. Um, and our theme for that game is kind of the Red River rivalry. So we'll have uh, the Texas versus Oklahoma uh, theme kind of going on. So um, come to Chances event to see the arena and then come back and see us in March for our game. Coach, can you do you have any 54 year old players out there? So we don't. Come out? Okay. We don't. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a, a first time for everything. You know, if you feel like you, you can hang, we'll let, we'll let you come out. <laughs> okay. All right. Debbie Watson, chime in. Hi, Debbie. Thanks for uh, thanks for commenting. And I'm gonna. So the tryout is when, Andre? Uh, it'll be late January. So over at Sports Academy in Frisco, that's where we hold all of our practices. Uh, they are part of Baylor Scott White, and they just got a brand new uh, turf laid out. It's right across the street from the Star. So if you ever drive by and see kids out playing on the turf. Uh, Sports Academy lets anybody come out there and run around. Um, they are our, our host for our practices. So uh, as soon as that turf is done um, and, and we can run around on it, we'll have our second tryout there in late January. Okay. I've blocked up my whole late January. Uh, yeah. So I may be there. Brian, we'll get, we'll get in shape. You and I will start practicing. We can I, get out there. I tell you, man, I've been, I've been training. Um, I'm ready. Put me in coach. I, uh, you know, you can use me. I'm, I'm six foot five. Um, used to play basketball a long time ago. Um, speed is not there. So yeah, I'm sure you could put me a tight end or something. You know? We'll figure it out. <laughs> All right. Deal. Cool. Anybody else have anything else in Frisco? Cause if not, I've got a couple, a couple events that I want to highlight. Yeah, oh, okay. um, we actually, the date will be to be determined. We can share that, but we do want to do a vision board workshop for the new year. So I would say mid January, y'all can come in the store. We'll have the supplies, we'll have some shake samples, and that will be a really great way to set some intentions for the new year. That's awesome. Love it. That is a great way to roll into 2024. Yeah. So that's fantastic. Love it. All right. Well, I have a, a something I want to mention. We, we talked about it in the, uh, the first show as well. Um, but this is an event uh, that's going to be hosted at Verona Villa. Uh, Jason Young owns Verona Villa. He was on our first show. Uh, but this is a Miss Frisco Texas Scholarship pageant. Uh, this is a there's some fundraising going on right now, but it's for scholarships for young women. Uh, the, the pageant itself is open to young women ages 17 to 25 years old. The uh, contestants will be selected live uh, at NAC Theater. So that's downtown Frisco, right by the railroad tracks. Uh, that'll be Friday, January 19th. And the pageant itself takes place on February 17th, uh, like I said, at, at Verona Village. So, um, look that up. There's, uh, I believe, a website, and it's also on Facebook. Uh, just search up Miss Frisco, Texas uh, pageant, and it will it will come up, and there's more information there. Also, if you've driven by downtown Frisco, you've seen the awesome light show that's going on in the square. Uh, they've also got some other stuff. They've, they've got an ice skating rink there. Uh, they've got Santa. Uh, light tunnel, horse carriages, all that fun stuff. Um, go down there if you get a chance. It's a uh, it's pretty cool uh, atmosphere for sure. Uh, and then you can, uh, you know, go to the ER afterward and see Chance uh, after you skate on the ice downtown uh, and fall and hurt yourself. Cause, I, cause I recommend cool. everyone try ice skating in Frisco. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and, and the, the venue that you guys play in, Andre, and, and that you've talked about your event being at, I know have open skates. We've done them before. Uh, the Frisco Ice Hockey Association, the teams in Frisco, they're doing fundraising, bring a can for donation of food, and you can skate for free. So I don't have the date on that. That just sparked my mind because we my son used to play for Frisco Ice Hockey Association at Frisco High, and uh, that was their fundraiser every year. And inevitably, somebody would always fall down and get hurt. So it's good business for the ER. That's right. All right, I just saw Lennon chime in on the chat here. So I think he's back online. And with that, we owe our sponsors some time. So Lennon, let's go ahead and hit the commercial.
All right. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, thank you to our sponsors and our co-hosts, uh, who we will see in coming weeks. Uh, looking forward to those shows as well. Um, but here's the part of the show where, uh, you know, we'll go a little bit deeper and learn from our guests, their involvement in Frisco and some of their thoughts, perhaps, on where Frisco's headed. Um, there's a lot of exciting things going on, a lot of growth as it has been over the last 20 plus years. So um, awesome to have some Frisco veterans uh, on as guests, as well as uh, I love the aspect or perspective of folks who came from out of town, um, Andre coming from the Philly area. Uh, I came from Chicago, so other big cities, but um, you know, coming here uh, to Frisco and seeing the growth and, and all the stuff that you guys got, you have going on with the fighters, Andre, um, would love to hear your perspective on it. But what I'll do is I'll throw a question out to the group. And um, in traditional fashion, we'll let the ladies go first. So Brendan, I'm going to, Brenda, I'm going to direct this question towards you. Um, since you live in Frisco uh, mm-hmm. and have operated in the area for as, as, as long as you have, um, what originally drew you specifically to live in Frisco? Uh, great question. So I have lived in my current home for for 14 years in Frisco. Prior to that, um, we bought it as an investment property. One of the historic homes in in old downtown Frisco had that for a while, Um, actually lived in it for a brief time and then had it as a rental property for a while. Um, And you know, prior to that, I owned and lived in Plano and my office is in Plano now. So I would say um, what drew me there is just, you know, I love the communities of both Plano and Frisco and the community yet being close to everything you need you know you talk about that little circle right around where you live and work and having everything that you need your daily function items near nearby was definitely that now i will also say in the last 14 years frisco has boomed so there's been a massive growth of population of business, um, of amenities. We have a little bit of everything. Many of the people who are on here today, you know, their businesses didn't exist in Frisco 14, 15 years ago. So it's been a great, um, great investment. I'm in real estate. It's been a great investment for those people who did invest in, in homes or businesses back 10, 15 years ago, you've seen great equity improvement over the years too. And those are still some of the same things that I love. You know, I'm kind of the South edge of Frisco. Um, I love the Northern edge of Frisco with the new PGA. I mean, all these and everything in between. So everything that's grown up over the years has just continued to be a a great advantage for living in Frisco. Yeah, no, those are, those are all great points and, and absolutely accurate if if there's something that you want to do you can pretty much find it in frisco and um you know if it's if it's involved in sports you can definitely find it and Um, isn't that funny because we don't you know 15 years ago you wouldn't have thought of sports being a big hub in frisco and yet it has grown so much i mean we have every sports topic you can think of in frisco now so if you like sports frisco is the place to be yeah, no doubt. It, it, yeah, I moved to the area almost 12 years ago, and as I think back to that, the the minor league baseball team, the Rough Riders, had a you know they they had a well established foothold in Frisco, um, but outside of that, I and I guess FC Dallas did as well. Uh, so the the MLS soccer team, um, but since then the Stars have joined the Frisco Brigade, uh-huh. the uh, Dallas Cowboys of of all organizations uh, have mm-hmm. joined. Um, so yeah, there's and obviously the PGA. You mentioned that. That's uh, that's that's a fantastic addition over the last year, year and a half or so. Um, so exciting, good stuff, good stuff. Yeah. Well, Jacqueline, I'd, I'd like to. Uh, I know you're a, a longtime real estate slash mortgage, um, you know, veteran as well, and have seen a lot of growth going on in Frisco. And, and you are muted, um, just just as a warning. Um, so tell us, tell us what drew you to do business in Frisco as well. That's a good question. Um, I actually grew up in the area, so I tell the story a lot because it's true. So I grew up in Plano, central Plano. I guess it was the early nineties. We had a real good friend of my dad's and she said, Hey, I, I just bought a house. I want you guys to come see it. We said, cool. Where is it? She said, Frisco. We said, where's that? We had no idea where it was because of the time the center of Frisco was right there on Maine. And even though they technically butted up like geographically, there was nothing that like touched Plano really as far as like 
development. And then Stonebriar Mall, by the time I made it to high school, was, you know, open and kind of developed. And it just, it's crazy how much it, it boomed in that time window, right? You know, I mean, literally, like Brenda said, there is so much to do. Um, you don't really have to go very far and you have pretty much everything. I remember 20 years ago, they said, oh, by probably 2025, almost the center of Dallas will be at 121 and the Dallas Miller Tollway. And pretty much that's what's happened, right? I mean, we're almost to 2025 and, and we're pretty much there where so much business, I mean, Toyota and all of these things right there on that, on those edges and the five, what is it? Five billion dollar mile guys, is that what it is? Um, you know, I mean, all that development. Um, and so it's just, it's such a great place to spend time. Um, and, and you can pretty much do anything. I mean, you want to shop, you want to eat, you want to watch sports, whatever you're into, Frisco can, can figure it out and, and have it. And even though we don't have the photography, um, you know, it doesn't matter. You want to go skydiving, you know, you can do the the crazy skydiving thing right there um, at Stonebriar Mall. So there's so many cool things to do in Frisco. It's sort of the the blend of the Texas charm, if you will, you know, where people are still pretty kind, but then you have all the blend of all these people coming in from all different places in the United States. So we're now getting all their cool food, right? So they opened, what is it, for Tillos or whatever from Chicago, you probably we're excited about that, Brian, when that it's all came not, in. It's not what is it, it's the Portillo's and it's the greatest <laughs> restaurant in, in the history of restaurants, okay? So, right, uh, well, yeah, I know no. it's kind of on the border, but like all that, right? I mean, it's right yeah. here, kind of at the epicenter of where all these things these these things meet. And so they've gotten all this amazing food and I'm a huge foodie, so I mean, I could eat for days. So I'm just excited. I'm like, yes, please bring me all your food. Cause my husband's from New York city. And he always said, oh man, they don't, they don't have enough good food in Texas. And I'm like, yes we do. And then of course now, like I said, because everybody has come here, everyone is bringing their food, which is exciting to me. I love, I love all the food. Bring me all the food. Amen, sister. Yeah. Caitlin, how you doing? That's our, our friend from the Wiley, uh, the, our, our host from the Wiley show chiming in. Good, good to see you. No, you're exactly right, Jack. And, and yeah, uh, thank you for the Portillo's reference because it, it, it absolutely is a fantastic uh, quick serve restaurant. Um, Italian beef, if you haven't been there, just get the Italian beef. Skip the hot dog, just go straight to the Italian beef. Uh, that and top it off with a chocolate cake shake. And you're good to go. Um, all right, so I wanted to shift gears a little bit and just uh, so Andre and your guest, Madeline. Um, Madeline, I want to hear how long you've been in the area. Andre, I know you're a little bit newer. Um, what I want to get from you guys, if you don't mind sharing, is uh, what's your favorite thing about the Frisco community? Yeah, well, I am actually from South Dallas. So okay. my dad and I both are Cedar Hill, Duncanville, but we chose Frisco for our franchise um, because it is so booming. There's a lot of people that are passionate about health and fitness. There's so many gyms. <laughs> it's one of the big things that we do is because we're the nutrition piece, we partner with gyms. And so there's just an overwhelming amount of people who are seeking uh, recovery therapies and to be fit and to increase their health. So we thought that that would be really great for what we do. I also love that even though it's huge, like it is a big town. There is still a lot of that small town feel and a lot of small business owners who are wanting to collaborate and still wanting to do things the old fashioned way. And so while it was kind of daunting, especially like coming into Frisco, I'm like, this just feels huge. Like maybe it's disconnected. But as I have now been here the past year, that really hasn't been my experience. And there are so many people that are so friendly. Um, like the, the owner and chef of the restaurant across the street told us, hey, if your freezer ever goes out, um, you can use my freezer to store your meals. Like first time meeting us. So that is what I really love is that while it is large, there is still a lot of um, small town connections. That, that's awesome. And, and uh, you know, I 
I can relate to that, uh, I guess, hospitality, the Southern, Southern hospitality aspect of, of not only Frisco, but the general area around here, uh, you know, coming from Chicago and Andre, you probably uh, know it even more. So, you know, big city, <laughs> uh, Philly has a bit of an attitude. Um, <laughs> you don't, you don't get that, that warm, fuzzy feeling from your neighbors just because it's the, you know, it is what it is. Um, yeah, but when we moved here, our neighbors from two doors down came over and brought cookies and brownies and introduced themselves. And, you know, so and they're still our, they're our best friends uh, to this day, you know, 11 years later. So it's uh, there is definitely something to be said about Southern hospitality. And um, we'll call it Frisco hospitality for, for this girl in yeah. particular. What about you, Andre? So you're you're relatively new to the area, um, you know, versus many others on, on the show today and many of our listeners. What, uh, what's your favorite aspect about, about Frisco? Honestly, it, it's going to sound uh, not as exciting because obviously I'm involved in sports, but that is what excited me about, about Frisco. I'm coming from Philadelphia where there's something to do every day sports related with having so many major universities there and then all the professional sports teams. I wanted to live in a place that felt the same way. So um, being able to go to a baseball game, being able to go to a soccer game, uh, being able to, you know, all of the high school sports here are, are so big. That was appealing to me. Uh, I love sports. Um, you know, I'm going to, I'd rather go watch a game than spend money to go see a movie. That's just me. Um, so having that available and having it be affordable, um, also in a safe place to live, uh, was, was a huge reason why I felt comfortable moving here. So um, as much growth as it's had uh, business-wise, I think the sports aspect um, of Frisco leads into the business and uh that's one of the big reasons why I moved here. Oh, that's awesome. Um, and, and you mentioned the, the safety aspect of it. Um, mm -hmm. we, we, we haven't talked about that much on the show, uh, you know, even through the previous two episodes. But yeah, I, I can't remember which magazine it was or is, but basically has Frisco and McKinney ranked as the top one or two or three over the past three years um, in safest places uh, in yep. the country to live. So, uh, and, and we'll probably have somebody from the police force, perhaps even even the, the chief of police. Uh, we've got some connections to him. If we can get him on the show, we, we may do that. No, that's that's a great call out because yeah, Frisco is absolutely one of the safest places to live, despite some of the some of the news events that you may have seen recently. Um, and the statistics hold true. Um, so anyway, with that, we've got to jump because we've got a commercial break. We got to do. Uh, Lennon, if you want to go ahead and hit the commercial break, we'll be back on the back end. All right, welcome back. Well, so uh, I'm glad that that commercial break played because, um, you know, we are on episode three of the Frisco Community Difference, and uh, we've successfully launched uh, other Community Difference shows, uh, specifically in Wiley and Rockwall. Uh, we've had one in Denton as well. Um, so what we're doing is basically spreading the love to all the different communities. And, um, you know, I've been, I was part of launching the Wiley Community Show, and it's, uh, you saw Caitlin chime in earlier. Um, that show was going fantastically well uh, and have some, had had some killer guests on that show. A lot of community leaders. Um, I've learned a lot personally about Wiley that I didn't know. Um, it makes me want to go buy some real estate out there. Uh, you know, Brandon, maybe we team up on that, uh, figure out how to make that happen. Um, but anyway, it, I guess what I'm saying is these community shows are, are awesome because you do get, um, you know, base level uh, information on the community, what's going on, who's who in, in the communities. Um, and that's what I love about them. So um, we are trying to get more community shows off the ground. So uh, Plano is coming up next. And you saw Nathan Smith chime in earlier. He's going to be heading up that show. Um, so looking forward to having more of those um, community differences, different shows go. So with that being said, um, with the community difference and whether it's Frisco or Wiley or any of the other shows um we do have a revolving business topic of the month um so what i'd like to do is just pose that topic to you guys and just hear your opinion on, on this one um and that is the future of frisco businesses small frisco businesses in a changing environment right we talked about how frisco has changed immensely over the last 20 years um you know madeline i'd love to get your opinion on this since you guys do have a smaller business andre you're a great one to chime in on this too uh, Kendra, I know you, you've been in Frisco for 20, 25 plus years. Um, so we have a great, great host of, of hosts and co-hosts and guests here to, to talk this topic. So let's see, Kendra, since, since uh, you just muted your microphone, I'm going to make you unmute it. Um, 
you work with a bunch of different, uh, you, you know, whether it be realtors or in, in the networking world, uh, you are very well connected, especially being in the, in the title business. Um, where do you see the future of small or local Frisco businesses? Um, and then also in reference to, you know, we've got a lot of bigger businesses in town. Where's, where's the fit there? How, did, how, does, it, how does that work? Honestly, what we're seeing right now is people are basically kind of, we're tapering down. They are being a lot more intentional. They are cutting the fat, trimming the fat. They are being a little bit more um, cautious and careful going into 2024. Because 2023 and anything that was related to real estate was very tight and it was tough and it was not the best year. It wasn't a horrible year, it just wasn't great. And it got tighter and tighter as those interest rates went up. And that affected everyone from your carpet cleaners to your home cleaners, to your roofers, to your your um, inspectors. I mean, we've got insurance companies, you know, pulling out of the state of Texas. So you've got so many different areas that's affected that you just don't realize that how dramatic the trickle down is. And even to the people that are like, you know, if you've got these realtors that are usually closing two deals a month or one deal a month, which is pretty good. If you've got 12 to 24 year close in a year, that's a, that's, you're doing well. But if you're doing that and you're closing something and you're used to going to a certain shop or two shops and you're buying thank you gifts for your clients, well, you're not doing that anymore. So that shop's just lost that. So I think I'm seeing like, so I have lived in Frisco since 1992 raised my three sons there and one of the places the things I love about Frisco is the diversity of everything everything is just very diverse but also because of um you can do anything there from being a PTA mom to um you know the the charities that have started there and that was one of the things I forgot to mention was refresh Frisco she's having her gate led the middle of January and they have actually the, the cool thing about Frisco that's where love packs and fast packs and refresh started and they've now branched out to other cities but they ironically started in Frisco and those are charitable organizations but they also go to these businesses to get donations so um, but kind of how to get back to that, it's kind of like what we're seeing is just the businesses just like tightening up. Like, pay, for instance, Paper Affair at um, Shops of Starwood. They had two in a large, large area. They were like, you know what? We don't need this big space. We're just going to put just all that stuff into a smaller space. And they had just expanded the bigger space and then the economy kind of and they got smart because they're in a great location, but they kind of got smaller. And that they're just thinking like, okay, we can do more with what we have. And I think that's where all of us are at right now is let's figure out what we can do with what we have and just, and also how to utilize all of our local businesses. Like um, Adlin, um, their business and how they're gonna you know, work with all the gyms and all the sports teams. I mean, that's, that's, I think, what we're just having to get smarter and go old school. It's, and Brenda will attest to this. It's, it's go old school. It's like, get on that phone, email, farm, you know, it's, it's old school communication. It's picking, it's just, it's true and simple going back and following up with people. Back to the basics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 